one thing we've always wanted in X-Plane is frame generation and now we have a method of doing so. This is really really easy to set up. I'm going to show you exactly how to do it today and almost double or triple your FPS in X-Plane. So as you can see in the top left corner there are two numbers here. Now these are FPS counters. The one on the left here is my FPS natively in X-Plane. So this is what I normally get and you can see here in the X-Plane FPS indication here I have 27 FPS because I've turned my settings up a fair bit today for this video. So this is what I would normally get however right now my screen is outputting 54 frames per second and as you can see it is super super smooth and that is what the frame generation is doing there so you can see that I've pretty much doubled my FPS here and I'm going to show you exactly how to do that right now. So here we now have the app that we are doing this with and it's called Lossless Scaling. Uh, this is available on Steam. It is around £6 but uh, it's really cheap and for what you get out of this uh, almost double or tripling your FPS I think it is more than worth it and definitely worth trying out. So I'll leave a link to this in the description. Uh, it is on Steam you can go ahead and get it from there and it's a super easy install. You just install like any other game on Steam. Uh, it's like Four megabytes or something so it's tiny it's virtually instant now once you load it up you're going to be greeted with this right here and there's just a couple of settings uh, we should go over which will give you some really good results so these settings were actually provided to me uh, from a user in my discord Burntis so a big thank you to him he's the one who alerted me to this and told me about this and I've been doing my own testing and it's been really really good so far so um, scaling mode you can leave this auto scaling type you can leave this off as well then we can enable the frame generation here so we want obviously 2.1 is the latest so select that now mode here this is x2 or x3 so now what this does is the way frame gen works is it uses the existing frames and then uses AI to generate the frames in between to interpolate between those now there are two modes here x2 and x3 X2 will interpolate one extra frame in between your native frames. So if you're getting 30 FPS, in between each of those frames, it's going to add one AI generated frame, which will roughly double your FPS. If you click X3, that will add two frames instead. So you'll pretty much uh, triple your FPS. But because you have two, as they call it, intermediate frames, the visual quality might drop a little bit. Now, I've not noticed a visual drop uh, at all really if you use this correctly but I've seen a massive increase in FPS and we're going to talk about how to use this correctly in a second. You want performance on, uh, clip cursor, scale cursor on as well um, all of this can be off these three here. Draw FPS if you want the FPS counter as we showed earlier and just copy what I have here. I didn't change much just a couple of things but this is all pretty much default. Now to run this all you're going to want to do is as you can see I've got X-Plane scaled but this will say unscale and you can simply click scale and then go into X-Plane. Alternatively you can use a hotkey and as you can see here it's Control alt s as default. So we go into X-Plane here and right now I have scaling off and if we show FPS here is 27 FPS and you can see that it is 20 FPS it's not smooth by any means at all we look around a little bit definitely not particularly smooth now I'm gonna hit the key binding here now control or s okay so now we have the uh, frame gen enabled and as you can see we are up to 50 ish FPS so we're around double and is really nice and smooth as you can see here now unfortunately one thing uh, one slight downside is the cursor does get um, fairly low FPS as you can see here but the actual sim itself if we do this look around it is nice and smooth now there is a slight amount of artifact and if you look at the edge of the windows there as you can see now the best way to fix that really is you want to be natively um, so your normal X-Plane FPS really wants to be above uh, 30 the more frames you give the AI to work with the better results you're gonna get so you can't just uh, you know smash all your settings up to the absolute max and turn this on it's not really gonna work but you do get a really nice frame increase and to be honest 
when you're just regularly flying around it looks pretty good right if we go to the wing view bachelor cockpit we'll do some flying in a bit and yeah it all looks pretty good so we're gonna take off here and take a look around London so I'm on high settings right now which is something I would never be running normally but let's uh, take off here and we'll go full power here we don't need it and we'll take a look around see what kind of resource we can get so you can see natively now we're down 27 so this would be pretty unflyable uh, in normal conditions but with a frame gen looking at nice and smooth frames you have like I said the lesser that you have and I'm really pushing my computer right now uh, for the purpose of this video we're gonna move in a second uh, to somewhere where we have a little bit better FPS something like what 30 does? or 40 FPS and then we're gonna see what kind of results we have there but as you can see it looks pretty good and it's nice and smooth okay well now as you can see we have loaded into uh, Tampa Bay still in the Zebo 737 and so here I have slightly higher FPS normally so about 45 uh, again I'm on high settings and you know that is acceptable I would happily fly at 45 FPS but with the frame gen we are at 93 FPS 96 so nearing on 100 FPS now obviously if you have a 60 Hertz monitor you're not going to see anything above 60 so that's you know sort of pointless there um, but I have a 144 hertz monitor, therefore I can see the the, uh, the 90 fps uh, difference between the 60 and then up to 90. Obviously, YouTube isn't going to show 90 fps. YouTube is only going to show 60. But what we're going to do is take a look at where, if you have a higher native fps, how the artifacting uh, goes away and it looks much much nicer. So, as you can see super super smooth uh, for me this is you know amazing 100 fps i'm looking at right now and it looks very good absolutely no artifacting there or a very 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 small amount if you look very closely um, but it just looks perfect and we're on x2 right now we could go on x3 and be on like 144 fps but there's no need um, so we're going to take off again set for flaps five and we'll take off again and take a look, uh, do some flybys, see what kind of performance we get. But this is really, really good. Now, it's also worth mentioning that uh, yes, there's a very slight amount of artifacting, but that's you know, you get that with frame gen pretty much all the time, even in Microsoft Flight Sim frame gen, uh, you do get a little bit. But in my opinion, you're not really going to notice it on a mate on a flight. If you've already got a semi decent FPS, it's uh, pretty good. All right, so we have flaps five set. I'm going to release the parking brake and we're going to advance the throttles here we've just got about 80% on the M1 we've got a fairly long runway maybe we'll go like 90 or 85 and yeah looks super super smooth like no artifact in there 80 knots and yeah I could probably put my graphics in even higher to absolute max out. Put the gear up, let's go for a flyby, see if you notice any artifact artifacting at all. And there was absolutely nothing there, it looked like I'm actually at 100 400. Meters. And you know, super smooth with this. And I'm on high settings like I said. Another thing to note is it has no effect on controls. I have no input lag or anything like that. Sometimes frame gen can cause that, but I've got absolutely nothing. Controls are responding exactly as normal. It's almost as if um, I'm actually running at 100 FPS. Uh, I've seen no other downsides. Now for absolute best results, it's recommended that you cap your X-Plane frame rate at half your monitor resolution. So if you're at 60 Hertz, cap it at 30. If you're at 144 Hertz, cap it at about 76 and then you can run the frame gen. The reason for this is, while yes, the more frames you have, 
you have, the better the visual results. Also, the more stable your FPS, the better the visual results. So if you cap your FPS and you have a stable sort of 30 FPS or stable 40 FPS, you're going to get really good results. So for £5, I think this app is really worth it. Uh, this does work for other games and simulators as well. So it's not just X-Plane. Uh, for £5 of value really is there. It's almost like spending £300 on a new CPU, except you're spending £5 and double or tripling your FPS. So I am going to be using this in the future. Uh, we'll be using it in my future streams as well. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any issues, please do let me know either in the comments or in my Discord. Do like and subscribe if you did enjoy the video and I shall see you in the next one.